Glory, glory, alléluia. Welcome to everybody here. Mesdames, Mesdemoiselles, Messieurs, bienvenue à notre nouvelle demi-heure encore une fois. Et ça fait longtemps que nous n'avons pas gagné l'opportunité pour capable avec vous parce que nous sommes en voyage. Mais bon, Dieu permet que nous sommes de retour. So, we have been out for a while. We were in we were on trip uh, in Israel. And now we are back and then we praise God for this opportunity to be with you, not by myself, but with Pastor Patton George. Pastor Patton. God bless you. Thank you for being here with us. God bless you, Pastor Dumont. Thank you for the opportunity to be here once again. Yes. Uh, so uh, I know you have been in library. <laughs> not, not library. Li- Liberia. Liberia, <laughs> yes. In West Africa, yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Amen. And then you back. Uh, when are you back in New Hampshire? Uh, so see, I think I've been back now for maybe some three weeks, perhaps. Three weeks, three weeks. Okay. Yes. So we're glad you're back, and then we're glad you you're here with us in our program Amen. and we switch from Creole or French to English today because of you. <laughs> oh well, we hope the people will get something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh yes, so we're here to really learn more about uh, our faith in Christ and the opportunity God is offering you to be part of his own family. But before we get started, we're going to go to uh, uh, Haitian group singing uh, uh, Gloire Alléluia. So let's go to the first song, uh, Gloire Alléluia. Thank you. 
sortie tout triomphant Il est vainqueur du péché Jésus, la de la mort Gloire, gloire, alléluia, Jésus va de l'avant, glory, glory, alléluia, Jesus is coming soon. We are glad to have Pastor Patron with us uh, again today, and Pastor Patron, what do you have for us? You know, Pastor Duan, I was studying the last few days, and there's a scripture, Romans 6, 23, mm -hmm. it says, the wages of sin is death, yes. but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. But as I begin to study, I went back into Genesis chapter 3, and we can see that there are more rewards that come with sin, bad rewards, before death actually comes. And so that's where we're going to be at today is in Genesis chapter 3. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to read the entire thing in the interest of Tom, but Genesis chapter 3, uh, verses 1 to 21. Yes. We remember the story, mm -hmm. how that uh, the serpent came to Eve and and uh, it, and said, can you eat of any of the trees of the garden? And, well, we can eat of any tree but one. Mm -hmm. and we can't eat of that tree. And because if we eat of that tree, then we will die. The serpent says, oh, you will not die. You will become as God. <laughs> and so uh, then again, she takes of the fruit. She gives to her husband. We know everything that happens, you know. But then we can see all the things that came because of their sin. Uh, when, when Adam took of the, the, the fruit and she ate of the fruit, the first thing that we see that sin brings is there in verse 7. It says, And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And so the first thing that comes when sin comes is we try to hide ourselves. We try to cover ourselves. Mm -hmm. We try to cover the sin so nobody can see it, yes. so that God can't see it. And rather than being honest and open and say, oh, you know, I've messed up, I've sinned. So many times we try to put it away or we try to belittle it. If you think about it, well, it's, it's not like killing somebody or it's not like, you know, committing adultery. Mm -hmm. We try to, well, it's just a small sin. And so the first thing that we see that comes with the wages of sin when we sin is, is, is a cover-up. We try to cover up. But then in verse 8 it says, and, 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 and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. The second thing that comes with sin is hiding from God. Hmm. First we try to cover the sin, and then we 
hide from God. So many times you see church members, they come and they come and they come and they're so faithful to church and then they get in sin and what's the first thing they do? They get out of church. Mm. They're hiding from God. The church people start calling on the telephone to find out. They don't pick up the phone. Why? <laughs> because they're in sin, you know. They're yeah. hiding right. from God. It's that conviction that's inside. And so we see we the you know, the, the wages of sin uh, brings uh, you know us trying to cover our sins, uh, trying to hide from God. But you know, Pastor, one of the greatest things that really got me is in verses 22 through 24 of Genesis chapter 3. It says, And the Lord said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. And so, uh, up until that time, he was, he was in the presence of God. Right. He was with God. He was walking with God in the cool of the day. But because of Adam and Eve's sin, they lost their position with God. Mm. Now they are removed from the presence of God because they are in sin. in sin. God sent them away out of the garden. No longer are they walking in the cool of the day anymore. Now uh, with the Lord, but now they are put out from the presence of God. And, and so uh, death, yes, sin brings death, but before sin brings death, it brings a cover-up. It, it, it brings a, a hiding from God. It, we lose our position with God. We're no longer in the presence of God anymore. We lose our peace. Up until that time, Adam worked in the garden. He was working for the Lord. He was enjoying. He had that peace of walking with God. But now he's cast out of the garden. He loses his peace now. Now he doesn't have the peace. He doesn't have the joy that he once had. But you know, Pastor, the one that really got me. Yeah. It says in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15, And God put Adam in the garden to, 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 to till and to guard the garden, to cultivate and to guard the garden. And so Adam had a ministry in the garden. Hmm. His ministry was ministering unto the Lord. That's what he was doing. He was in the garden and he was ministering unto the Lord. But when sin came into his life, he lost his ministry in the Lord. No longer is he ministering in, in, in the presence of the Lord, but now he's lost his ministry. No longer is he, is he toiling for God. He's not working for God anymore, but now he's having to work for himself to provide for himself. He's, he's laboring for himself. He's tilling the ground and the thorns and the thistles and all these things. When sin comes in, there's so much destruction that comes in with it i've got more i know we need to go on to the yes, to yes. the music but there's so much that comes with sin before death actually comes with sin there's so much more that comes with sin i want to share with you here after the song i want to share with you how you can be delivered from sin you don't have to stay in sin but you can be delivered from sin so uh actually uh, i wanted to know uh, how uh, you interpret this message to the people today uh, because uh, you're talking about Adam and Eve yes. uh, now for, for the uh, people today. And the same with us. When we get into sin, what do we try to do so many times? Rather than confessing our sin, we go and we, we try to hide our sin. <laughs> yes. Or we try to cover up our sin. It causes us to or lose to justify our, our sin. To justify our sin. Uh, or, or we lose our position with God. Maybe at one time we're talking with God and we're walking with God and we're, we're in the presence of God and God is speaking to us, and, and, but we lose our position because sin has come in and, 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 and God can't allow sin to be in his presence. And so now to protect us, God begins to move away, right? And then we lose our ministry, whatever our ministry was, now we begin to lose our ministry mm. with God. You know, maybe our ministry was singing. Maybe our ministry was preaching. Maybe our ministry was, was being a deacon. Maybe our ministry was one of these things. Whatever our ministry is, even if our ministry is just, is just worshiping the Lord, we begin to lose our ministry. Now, no longer do we have that ministry that we had before, ministering unto the Lord. But now, we're having to minister to ourselves. You see, uh, the Adam was Adam was ministering to the Lord, and God was providing everything he needed. He didn't need for anything, but because sin came to his life, now Adam is having to provide for himself. 
But we can talk about the goodness of God. Uh, yes. While Adam went away, but God went after him to the, where are you? Adam, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> Adam said, I was naked and I hid myself. <laughs> and really, if you think about it, Adam was not naked. When you read Exodus 33 and you find Moses on the mountain, in Exodus, he said, I just want to see your face. God said, no man can see my face and live. Mm. He said, but I'll hide you in the cleft of a rock. And as I remove my hand from the rock, you can see my glory. When Moses came down from the rock, he was clothed in the glory. The glory scared the people. They had to cover Moses' head. Mm -hmm. And so you think about that. Moses had been in the presence of God. And so, so the glory of God had got on him. And so Adam and Eve were not naked. They were clothed in the glory. Wow. But when they sinned, the glory departed from them. Mm -hmm. Now they are naked. Now they are hiding themselves. They are covering themselves. They lose their position so much. They lose their provision. And then you know what they do, Pastor, is they start blaming. Mm. Yes, they start blaming. Adam says, it was the woman that you gave me that made me eat this fruit, you know. And, and, then, and then the woman says, oh, it was not me. It was the serpent that made me eat the fruit. And so now rather than saying, we sinned, we did wrong. Mm. Now they, it's this person's fault. And even today, when we sin, what is the first thing we do? Oh, it's because of my raising. It's because of this person. It's because of that person. They made me sin, you know. They made me get mad. They made me do whatever. And so we begin blaming other people for the sin that we're in. Mm. But God came looking for them. Mm. Yes. I know we have to get to a song, but... Uh, no, the song is not really the primary thing. We want to know oh, Jesus now that yes. comes to the picture. And this is where... This is where this is where God comes looking for Adam and Eve. God comes to try to find them where yet God didn't have to ask where they're at. He's God. He knows exactly where they're at. And so, and so, and so uh, God comes and looks for them. He knows what's already happened. Adam, Eve, where are you at? We were naked. We hid ourselves. And so then we see what happens. You know, God says, okay, the woman uh, now, uh, 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 it says in verse 15, and I will put him between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. Talking about the serpent, talking about Satan. And then it goes on talking, the, the woman will, will have pains in childbirth and her husband will rule over her. And then how that Adam will have to toil by the sweat of his brow to have bread in the, and, and, and then he's going to return to the dust. But then we find this beautiful picture. God comes looking for them. And then look in verse 21. It says, Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. And so the first time death was introduced into the Bible, God took an animal. And I wonder maybe if it wasn't a lamb. Mm. It doesn't tell us what the animal was. Yes. God takes the animal and he kills the animal himself. And while the blood is still on the animal, God wraps Adam and Eve in those bloody garments. Mm. He applies the blood over their sin. God goes looking for them, and he takes the blood, and he applies it over their nakedness. Amen. And then when you look into the New Testament, when Jesus came, mm -hmm. what Jesus did, you know, Jesus, God wrapped in the flesh, God made the sacrifice to reconcile us back unto himself. Mm -hmm. Because of the sin in our life, we couldn't get to God. Yes. And so God comes looking for us. Yes. God comes seeking us. And then the blood has been applied in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Amen. Amen. God doesn't take the blood of the animal anymore, but God takes his own blood God, God. and applies it to our sins. Mm. And then in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20, it says, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. But the sweetest passage of all is in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm. cleanse us, us from all sin. Amen. So the same when God applied the blood to Adam and Eve on those bloody skins, he put the blood over them to, to cover their sins. Mm. Even though they were out of fellowship with God, 
here in the New Testament, we see how that God takes his own blood. Amen. And he applies the blood to our sin. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. So we don't have to walk in sin anymore, Pastor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If we will not do as Adam and Eve, if we don't try to hide our sin or try to cover our sin or try to separate ourselves from God, now we can go to God and say, Lord, I've messed up again. Lord, I've sinned. Please forgive me of my sins. I know I've done wrong. And once again, God takes and he applies his own blood. Amen. Covers Amen. our sin and forgets Amen. our sin. The Bible says he cast our sin as far as the east is from the west. Amen. Amen. So we don't have to live in sin anymore. Before the final word, let's go to the to a group now singing a, a final song for us. Amen. Oh, yes. I forgot my, my English now. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, Pastor, so what the last word? What, what the conclusion of the whole story? You know, the conclusion of the whole story is we have a decision to make. Yeah. We can be an Adam and Eve. We can hide from God. We can run away from God. We can blame everybody else. Or we can come to Jesus and say, Lord, I've sinned. I've done wrong. And the thing I want you to realize is there is no sin that God cannot forgive. Mm -hmm. There is no sin that God cannot wash away. Mm -hmm. You think about even David. Mm -hmm. David was an adulterer. David was a murderer. David had so many sins that he had committed, mm -hmm. but yet God forgave him and God mm -hmm. restored him. Yes. And so today, right now, for those of you that are watching here on the television and those that are watching via Facebook right now, right now you can call out to Jesus. Right now you can call out to Jesus. Lord, I know that I am a sinner. I know that I've done wrong. Please forgive me of my sins and help me to go away from them. 
I confess you as my Lord. I receive you as my Savior. Take control of my life and make it meaningful. I commit my life to you in Jesus' name. And at that moment, Pastor, not with the mouth, not with the head, but when you pray that with the heart, calling unto Jesus, He takes and He washes it away. When you come up, now, now, God has purified you. God has prepared you. Amen. But then you need to follow through. You don't just stop there. That's becoming a believer. But now you want to become a born again. Mm. Born again is to be baptized. Yes. You want to follow through with baptism. Yes. Yes. And, 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 and then you want to find a good church to be in. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know of a good church. The First Haitian Baptist Church. Yes. Merrick Street is a very good church to be part <laughs> <Exactly>. of. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to mention that then. Yes. Uh, I'm glad uh, you remind them that mm, this uh, program is from First Baptist Church, First Haitian Baptist Church. And we are at uh, 439 Mary Mark Street, Manchester, New Hampshire. And you can come up this Sunday. Oh, you are with us every Tuesday now to preach for us. Every Tuesday for the prayer service, yes. Exactly. Prayer so service is from 9 until 12.30. 12.30. Fasting so. and prayer. Amen, amen. So we know uh, you, have, uh, you enjoy this program and you want to come and worship with us. Remember this Sunday at 9.30, we're waiting for you. We have our Sunday school at 9.30. And then after that, we have uh, the worship service. And uh, every Tuesday, like Pastor said, is going to be there to share the Word of God with us. What a pleasure to have you, Pastor. Pastor, thank you so much for the opportunity. And thank you for all of those that have tuned in, television and Facebook. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, uh, you here for a while, you said? Uh, yeah, I'll be here. Um, I'm trying to get maybe about the middle of August uh, to try to make another quick trip back to Liberia. Mm -hmm. But uh, then we will be right back again. Right back again. Yes. So we want you to be back here too at our program. Amen. I'll Amen. be glad to come. Yes. Uh, all right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we just praise God for this opportunity to have Pastor Pastor with us. And we want you to be with us too when you visit our church right here in Manchester, New Hampshire at 439 May Mark Street. And then we'll be glad to introduce you to a different kind of program we have. We have a program online where you can be with us every night at 617-651-8802. Uh, so we are really here to bless your life. So uh, thank you again, Pastor. Thank you and so much, Pastor. We, we know God is using you in a very mighty way, and we're going to uh, expect to uh, have you back uh, soon. Amen. Thank you for watching this program today. May God truly bless you. Uh, we hope to be there pretty soon. God bless you.